Hey, what's going on guys? Jake Verden Tech here, back with another video. And today we're going to be talking about the iPad Air 5th generation and doing a review on it. So I picked up my new iPad about a week ago and I've been using it pretty rigorously. And mainly I got this iPad to kind of serve as my daily everyday carry mobile computing device versus the laptop that I used to kind of have on me. And I gotta say, I know a lot of people aren't very interested in iPads and because overall they're pretty similar year to year, but this one is pretty impressive. I've actually found it to be an absolute joy to use whenever it comes to photo editing, video editing, making some sort of graphics and procreate. It's been a lot of fun and I'm starting to use that tool a little bit more now that I have this device. And anything that I would normally do on a laptop or desktop, I've kind of found I can get by with the things that the iPad has to offer as far as tools that kind of make that crossover. So previously I would carry the Asus ROG Zephyrus M15 gaming laptop and although it's a great laptop with a lot of power it's kind of the double-edged sword. I guess you could say with great power comes great power consumption and that was kind of the thing with a lot of these gaming laptops and a lot of laptops on the market. It just gets kind of inconvenient on the go if you're always having to charge it. Not great battery life. They are pretty noisy and they do heat up quite a bit even doing more basic tasks. And I found just with a laptop form factor, I would rarely pull it out unless I really had to. So that had me kind of leaning more towards a tablet style, either dual purpose laptop tablet setup, something like a Microsoft Surface, or looking back towards the iPads. Now I have used iPads in the past, but I've never had one that is specced out like the 5th generation Air. I've usually just had the base model iPads where you can edit on them, but you can definitely see the lag when trying to render certain images and certain changes you've made. And most of the time I would see that in Lightroom pretty frequently. But now that they have the Air, which kind of bridges the gap between the base iPad and the Pro, and with the Air having the M1 chip, editing and more intensive workloads is just so much better on the iPad Air. So in this video, guys, we're basically just going to do a review and a bit of a rundown on the iPad Air 5th generation. I'm going to kind of give you all the specs and all the more notable specs that you'll be looking into and how it differs from the Pro, along with my experiences and kind of reviewing this from a PC slash IT guy's perspective. As I know, Apple is kind of disliked in that area of the tech community. So I think we're going to save the topic of can this replace your laptop for another video. This is more just going to be a review of the iPad Air 5th generation. Along with just my experience from using it daily. And talking about the things I use the iPad for and how it does really well with it. Alrighty guys, starting things off, talking about the specs of the iPad Air 5th generation. This is quite a bit different of a product in the product stack when it comes to Apple stuff and when talking about iPads. The most notable feature of this iPad Air is the processor, which happens to be the new M1 chip, which is also found in the iPad Pro, which in this case, the iPad Air with the M1 chip has eight cores for the CPU, eight cores for the graphics, and also eight gigs of RAM. We have a 10.9 inch liquid retina display that is 2360 by 1640 for the resolution and 500 nits of brightness. And as far as the refresh rate goes, this display runs at 60 Hertz. Other very notable features are the presence of a USB type C port, support for the iPad Pro accessories, such as the Apple Pencil, second generation and keyboards like the smart keyboard folio and magic keyboard from apple for the camera we have a 12 megapixel camera that has a f-stop of 1.8 and the front facing camera is also 12 megapixels with a ultra wide focal distance and does support center stage as far as the security goes this ipad doesn't support face unlock but we do have a touch id with a fingerprint scanner for the sleep wake button. I actually don't think we've done any sort of Apple content on the channel, so this is kind of a new one for me. But as far as iPads go, 
This is probably the year that they've bridged the gap closest between the Air and the Pro, with the Air having the CPU performance of the M1 chip. In a nutshell, the biggest differences between the Air and the Pro, and which might have you guys kind of on the fence about which ones to buy, is the Pro does have the 120Hz ProMotion display that also has a higher brightness and nits and a slightly different resolution. The Pro also has Thunderbolt with USB Type-C, a higher quality front and rear facing camera, and more storage on the base model. In this comparison, I was referring to the 11 inch iPad Pro, but it also does come in a 12.9 inch as well. As far as my consensus goes, whether you should buy the Air or the Pro, I think it comes down to budget and whether or not you need the extra features of the Pro. If you can get by with 64 gigs of storage and don't necessarily have to have the 120 hertz ProMotion display, USB Type-C with Thunderbolt, and some of the other features of the iPad Pro, I think the Air is absolutely perfect. Plus, with the cost savings of the Air while still getting the performance of the M1, I would take that money and invest it into the Pro accessories such as the Apple Pencil, 2nd Gen, and also some type of keyboard such as the Smart Keyboard Folio, or I highly recommend the Magic Keyboard. So as far as what I've been using the iPad Air for so far has mostly been different types of photo editing, whether it's just editing and color grading photos in Lightroom, or making thumbnails for the YouTube channel. So far, the iPad Air has handled all that stuff extremely well. The performance is really good when it comes to photo editing in both Lightroom. And I have tried Photoshop a little bit, but since it is a bit lackluster from all the things I've been hearing and messing with it a little bit, I have moved over to Affinity Photo to do some of the more in-depth photo editing and photo manipulation as far as like making thumbnails. And it's handled extremely well. I'm very used to doing all my photo editing in Photoshop from a desktop and using a mouse and keyboard, but the Apple Pencil is extremely intuitive to use when it comes to that kind of photo editing. And I really enjoy it. And it's just nice having it in this small form factor where I can take it out at any time and work on some photos or some thumbnails and not have a huge investment in time with just pulling out the laptop, the power brick and all that stuff just to edit some photos. Along with other creative stuff I've been messing with, I've really enjoyed messing with Procreate. Although I'm by no means an artist, I found Procreate to be pretty easy to pick up if you're familiar with Photoshop and the way layers work in different photo editing apps, which also makes Procreate a very useful tool when making different types of graphics or editing certain types of graphics and overall just a very fun app when it comes to drawing. Other things I've been using the iPad for, a lot of it has just been organization. I've really come to love the app GoodNotes or jotting down some quick YouTube ideas for videos, certain talking points, and overall just organizing my thoughts and just using the Apple Pencil to write out the notes. The Magic Keyboard really takes this device to the next level, giving it that little bit more closer to a laptop feel. If you do plan on doing a lot of typing, I definitely recommend going with something like the Smart Keyboard Folio or the Magic Keyboard, which also has the trackpad and a couple other features and is kind of the more premium option. I've really fallen in love with the Magic Keyboard as it has turned my iPad kind of into a mini laptop and is great for when I'm replying to YouTube comments and doing a lot of typing, maybe typing an email or typing some notes. A keyboard for the iPad, in my opinion, is definitely a must if you are gonna be doing a lot of typing, opposed to using the on-screen touch keyboard. So I think as far as mobile computing devices go in the laptop and tablet category, I think iPad still kind of reigns supreme for its category. With the performance of the M1, a lot of things that you would normally do on a laptop can now be done on a tablet. And native app support is increasingly growing by the day as the App Store has a lot of different apps it never used to have. In technology, you're definitely never future-proofed, but I think with the Air 5 from Apple, I think you're a little bit more future-proofed with it having the M1 chip and a little more RAM than we've seen in previous offerings, which is kind of the thing that's held back previous iPads. So this hardware should be supported for quite a while. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you all for checking this one out. Hopefully you found it helpful and gave you some insight on the iPad Air 5 and exactly what this tablet can do. So far, I am super happy with all this tablet is capable of and it's been a really good, pleasurable device to use. 
both at home and on the go. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like on it. And if you want to see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.